The integrated circuit, the computer chip, invented just a little over 50 years ago, it's changed our, way, our lives and each of your lives in so many ways. In entertainment, communication, computing, how we access information, how we crunch data and get answers, our productivity in our homes and offices, even the safety systems in our car. We use a lot of electronics every day. They're all around us. For me, it started when we used electronics for entertainment. In grade school, I got a cassette tape recorder from my grandfather. In the 70s, we had eight tracks. Uh, we moved to Walkman and gigantic boom boxes in the 80s. What a great time. Um, <laughs> and today, it's, it's morphed into a drastically different form factor where a small device can hold thousands of songs on an MP3 player. Very different. Next, think about how communications changed when we went wireless and mobile. We had Gordon Gecko in the movie Wall Street with that big clunky cell phone. I'm sure each of you remember your first cell phone. Uh, dug out mine for everybody to see. It was a Motorola with that nice uh, fake antenna. Fortunately, we moved on quickly to Blackberries and Trios, and today, probably everyone in this room has a smartphone with them. Uh, in computing, I'm sure not everyone had their geek phase programming like I did on a dial-up mainframe from my junior high library, uh, or on an Atari 400 at home where we could write very cool programs in BASIC. But uh, I know all of you remember your first encounter with the personal computer. You probably remember your first laptops. And uh, again, this audience probably has more iPod, iPads per capita than anyone else. We have sleek tablets that have changed things. I got involved directly in the evolution of electronics. Uh, after my junior year, I got a summer job at IBM, working in the fab, building these amazing devices. I went to Silicon Valley after college. And uh, now, 27 years later, I still can't believe I'm working on it. We love our electronics. They've gotten sm smaller, cooler, faster, and cheaper, following Moore's Law. It was great to hear two doctors this morning mention Moore's Law. Um, satisfied my inner geek. Um, we don't leave home without them. We check the scores of the ball game surreptitiously under the conference room table or, or in the restaurant. Some of you may even sleep next to them, much to your spouse's chagrin. But take a look at the electronics we use and love so much. They're essentially smaller versions of the rigid bricks they've always been. They're solid, boxy, and often uncomfortable to use. We look, overlook our inconvenience because the pros outweigh the cons. We babysit our devices to keep them synced and charged. We hold rigid electronics in our laps or against our ears or even on the laundry basket. Inconvenience extends to medical electronics as well, tethered to wires and sensors in the hospital or outside of the hospital, an elderly person struggling with cumbersome electronics in their homes. The problem is today we must conform to electronics, and we don't really question it. We've accepted it as inevitable. The other issue is that for our bodies and for the medical world, we haven't seen the same speed of innovation that we've seen in computing and communications. Why is that? The problem is that computing is still tied to a flat and rigid board. But the world isn't flat. Try to find, in the natural world, try to find right angles and perfectly flat surfaces, and you'll find very few examples. The human body is not planar, but delicate, soft, flexible, and organic. So despite shrinking size and amazing power, we still have to adapt to the reality of a flat and rigid technology and how that intersects with an organic world. But what if electronics were soft and pliable, like, a, like our skin or like a balloon? What if electronics conform to us instead of us conforming to them? This opens a new frontier of innovation where we can innovate on form. Imagine how this can change our behaviors, and in particular, how we can manage our health and how you practice medicine. Why wouldn't we want to do things like this? The biostamp a smart-sensing skin, very thin, very light, uh, like a kid's fake tattoo. Apply and forget, and we move on from there. 
We can use this for lots of different types of applications. We can optimize the performance of the athlete or warfighter. We can reduce injury by providing early warning to a change in performance or motion. We can improve our access to health care by getting it only if and when it's needed. They've gotten smaller and cooler, like the polar heart rate monitor or the body media fit or the Nike Fuel. But the problem is they're still noticeable and sometimes annoying. We need a better form. So we move on to a smart sensing sticker like the BioStamp. So how do we make electronics thin and conformal? The first concept is that thin means flexible. Take a look at the difference between this solid wooden desk and the paper on a book. Or look at the difference between a plate glass window and a fiber optic. It's, uh, they're both essentially the same material, but making things thinner makes them easy to bend. Thin means flexible, but flexible is not enough. Um, think about wrapping a gift. Even I can do it neatly if it's rectangular and boxy. But try to, try to wrap something irregular, like a football or an Easter egg, and you can't do it without folds and crinkles unless you wrap it with something like stretch wrap or spandex. So here's an idea. Let's apply this concept to microelectronics. We build a stretchy mesh with electronics on thin islands connected with springy pop-up bridges like you see here. Then we print that mesh onto a thin plastic, like a decal or saran wrap, which holds the whole mesh together. With this approach, we can build body-worn stickers that seamlessly measure our body activity, waterproof yet breathable. And what can we measure? Signals from the heart, from the brain, from our muscles, temperature, motion, even hydration. And what kind of applications does that enable? To keep track of our kids, parents can track a kid's activity level or even location. For the first responder, a person down triage patch that quickly determines vital signs and the need for timely help. Imagine for your kids playing contact sports, a wearable device that measures impulse to the head, another set of eyes on the field to alert for possible concussion and to see if that three-hour trip to the emergency room is worth taking. For a friend who's a diabetic, a tattoo-like sticker to help detect hypoglycemia before it gets severe for a relative with congestive heart failure, a non-invasive way to sense how the heart contracts and get him back on his meds. For the, a veteran who's an amputee, a powerful yet comfortable human computer interface for prosthetics. In all of these examples, a new form enables continuous monitoring, invisible to the user. What else can you envision? Beyond wearables, it would be great to use softer microelectronics inside the body. Implantable devices are getting smaller and more powerful, following Moore's law, but still the body must adapt to them. Can we move beyond a box-like form and have finer, more targeted control of what we're doing? Invasive surgery is effective but traumatic. The advantage? A surgeon can see, touch, and feel directly. Minimally invasive procedures, on the other hand, have grown quickly, much lower risk to the patient, much faster recovery times. What's still hard is this. Catheters are essentially long mechanical sticks made of neat, flexible materials, but we have little understanding as to what's happening at the far end of the catheter. Now consider if you bring soft conformal electronics inside the body. Why not have soft and expandable sensors and stimulators on a smart catheter? Or a stretchy sheet of sensors that can measure what's happening on tissue or organs? How can one do this? We take the idea of a pop-up bridge one step further, creating springy interconnects that can expand to several times their original length. Like little slinkies, they connect islands that expand when the balloon gets into the beating heart. So where do smart catheters take us? Looking at cardiology first, we have several examples. For those with irregular heartbeats, a one-shot ablation procedure that maps, zaps, and verifies the result. And similar approaches look promising for treating high blood pressure. We can improve procedures to assess arteries for possible blockages, 
to target stent use and even for heart valve replacement. We can also extend this to other interventional procedures in the body, GI, urology, and even managing pain. Ultimately, I want you to imagine electronically augmented organ implants, skins that provide continuous self-powered monitoring in an automated closed loop. I'm sure you all can imagine many more uses. Looking forward, the really profound opportunity is to understand the mysteries of the body. We've seen a series of innovations in mechanics, like hip and knee replacements, in the plumbing of the body with stents and then drug-eluting stents, uh, in chemistry with targeted drugs moving to personalized medicine, but there's been a lot less understanding and mastery of the body's electrical system. I want to give you a specific example. Consider the one-third of epilepsy patients whose seizures are not controlled by drugs. I've been to a hospital ward in New York City with an entire floor of patients connected to a room full of computers. Do you know how they're connected? Doctors literally saw open the cranium and manually collect, connect electrodes to the surface of the brain, holding the patient hostage for a week or 10 days while they hope to isolate the source of the seizures. Obviously very traumatic for the patient and only moderately effective in isolating the problem. There has to be a better way. So what can we do? Remember the islands and bridges. We put a whole bunch of them on a folded, thin sheet. We, draw, we drill a narrow burr hole in the skull and expand that sheet onto the surface of the brain. By going thin and using active electronics, we get, we get better data while dramatically improving the patient's experience. Much better data and much less invasive. We can then take what were a few isolated measurements, like individual pixels in a picture, and then get a complete image, and then even move it forward into moving video. Suddenly, we have a movie of the mind with the sensitivity to pick up the precursors to seizures before they occur, or to explore Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or other neurological disorders. To summarize, I want to take a look at the new reality when electronics conform to us in a, vis in a, in a natural way and visualize that for you. So for you parents out there, who's been terrified through the night when your baby has a high fever or trouble breathing? Instead, picture a smart sensing sticker that alerts you to any change in a thin, unnoticeable form factor. For a heart failure patient wanting to get active, but very concerned or even scared about overdoing it, new ways of delivering soft diagnostics in through the femoral artery up through the vasculature and inside the beating heart where a soft diagnostic can be deployed. The catheter delivered patch provides peace of mind verification that meds and exercise are doing the job. A quick look at the smartphone reassures that all's okay. Lastly, for understanding some of the unknowns of the mind, we have new tools for understanding how things work and for how systems go awry. And in addition, we can predict when events will occur while there's still time to react. So here's what I'd like to leave you with. Reshaping electronics will change medicine and advance the quality of life. I'm sure each of you can picture an application where someone in your life, a friend or loved one, could someday benefit from a smart sensing sticker or a soft device in the body that can sense, compute, and deliver a targeted therapy. I'm personally excited about a world where soft electronics makes it easier for us to get healthy and stay healthy. And probably the biggest opportunity is to further unlock the mysteries of diseases. Imagine what we don't know today that we will learn from a closer look at our body's system which is possible when sensing and computing electronics conform to us. Thanks very much.